folks don't even dare to touch that dial. This is still the new Yankee workshop, except instead of being in the workshop, I'm on a river. Now the location is secret, but we're here with a couple divers who are actually looking for some sunken treasure, except it's not gold. Rick and Joe, what are you looking for? What is the treasure here? We're trying to recover a lost resource in uh, antique, axe cut, virgin heart pine, and heart cypress. Now where did, where did these logs come from? Well, they were rafted, timbered, and drug to the river, formed into raft, and rafted downstream to the mills. So they actually grew right out there on the banks of the river, and uh, they were lashed together down here, sent down, but why are you finding logs? Wouldn't they all end up down at the end of the river? Well, unfortunately, they didn't all make it. There are a lot of uh, spots in the river hard to navigate, shoals, Obstacles the raft run into, broke apart, logs scattered, and that's what we're here after. So they're down under all this water. Now, what's it like down there? It looks a little muddy. Well, it, it is a little muddy. We do have a, a, about three or four feet of visibility. It's uh, pretty much a rocky bottom, and uh, you run into a little bit of wildlife. <laughs> yeah, nothing uh, harmful, I hope. No, sir, just a few banded water snakes, a couple nice sized turtles, and catfish here and there. All right, are we going to find some uh, today, do you think? Well, find we're coming up on a set of shoals here in a minute or two that is a prime location to find the log. All right, yeah. Found one here. What do you think it is? Right. Boy, this axe cut. Which means it's old, right? It's old. It was cut, it was cut down. Dates at 100 years or better. It looks to me to be hard pine. No oh, limbs. I don't know if I can find any lash rings or any uh, peg holes where they drilled it to, to peg it together. Oh, there's moss and everything growing on it. You would think with the water running this fast, there would be nothing on it. But And you just lifted out the log that must be 30 feet long like it was nothing. How could you do that? These logs, when they're in the water, are almost neutrally buoyant. But as soon as you break the uh, surface of the water with them, they're incredibly heavy. Well, Joe, it looks like you really hit it on this one, but what about that big log right over there? I'd have to say that would be a trophy-sized log. That's a big, uh, big heart cypress log. Really? Well, what do you think, Rick? Uh, this log is a real beauty, real beauty. This log must be almost three feet in diameter. So how old do you think this is? I would have to say it would be close to 800, 900 years old would be my guess. Uh, this is gonna be a really valuable log. If you look at these little spikes, that's indicative of a bird's eye. Okay. And a bird's eye's heart cypress is uh, really valuable. It's really beautiful. Well, wow. I'm glad you found this one and I'd like to watch you harvest it, but for the amount of time we have today, I don't think we can stick around for that. Well, you're in luck. Uh, early this morning, Joe and I went down river and we found some smaller logs, heart cypress logs, and we've got them at the landing if you want to go take a look at them. Love to. Uh, Joe, how long do you suspect that log was sitting in the bottom of the river? I would expect 100 years, maybe better. Really? What surprises me, though, is that wood in the water like that for 100 years, that it's worth anything. Well, it's not rotten. The water pr protects it by depriving it of oxygen. All right, Joe, now what happens to the logs from here? Well, that's when this fellow over here takes over. Hi, Norm. Hey, George. What, what do you think of that little operation on the riverbank? Well, I think your guys had a real profitable day. They found some real nice cypress and pine. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. I hope y'all had a nice time. Oh, it was great. Uh, what's going to happen to all these logs after you get them loaded on the trailers? Well, we're going to truck them back to Florida to our sawmill, uh, where we'll cut them into lengths and then saw them into lumber on the sawmill. Uh, we'll stack it out and air dry it for two to three months, then kiln dry it and then mill it into flooring or paneling so, or cabinet wood. So it's a, available to all the cabinet makers and Bam, home builders around the would country. like it. That sounds great. How much does it cost, though? Uh, somewhere between three and five dollars a board foot. Okay, so you're not Depending giving it away. No, yeah, sir. you're not giving it away. But for that quality of wood, I guess it's worth it. That's very much. And worth for it. all the work these guys had to go through. Guys, go through a hard time to get this. Well, thanks a lot. Well, it's we my thoroughly pleasure. Thoroughly enjoyed it's it. It's our pleasure. Finding the cypress was an important first step. 
But now it was time to start thinking about building a prototype. And even though I really like the lines of this antique bench, I thought I could make a couple improvements. And one of them was with these boards along the back of the bench. They're just simple square butt joints. And these boards are going to expand and contract with changes in humidity. You really can't hide a joint like that. So I decided on my prototype that I would celebrate the joint. And what I've done is just slightly chamfered the edges of all the boards. Now on the antique original, at some point in time, the old seat must have rotted away and it was replaced with a piece of plywood that had been painted on the top edge. It's been on there about 10 years and it held up really well and I'll show you why. It was actually made out of not just ordinary plywood, but this plywood, MDO board. It's a plywood core and a paper surface. It's waterproof and it holds paint really well. In fact, they make highway signs out of it. But I don't think a piece of plywood or even MDO board is going to look good against this nice cypress. So I did a simple glue up. A couple pieces of one by eight glued together with a good waterproof adhesive. Now, a couple more things about the old antique that I noticed. The boards at the bottom were tightly butted to the back and the front and even pretty close together. And that they used ordinary screws which will rust. The problem with this is that it's not a totally waterproof project. Some moisture is going to get in there. So when I built the prototype, I deliberately spaced the boards at the bottom to let air circulate in there. And I went down to my woodworker's store and found some stainless steel screws. They'll never rust, and even if they get wet, they won't stain the natural wood. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And also, remember this. There is no more important safety rule than to wear these, safety glasses. Now last night, before I left the shop, I glued up the panels that I'm going to need to build our bench. Because the waterproof glue has to cure for about six to ten hours before you can start working with the panels. And I'll show you how I did that. As nice as this cypress is right from the mill, there's always a little variation in wood and thickness. And when you do glue up, sometimes that can present some problems. If you have a surface planer, you can run all your stock through in a matter of a few minutes, ending up with a consistent thickness. Now, one of the accessories that I find really valuable for the surface planer is this chute. It hooks up to a hose, which goes to a vac. And what it does is it keeps the dust down, but more importantly, it removes all the chips from the planing operation. If you don't have this, they're all over the floor. Now, if you have a joiner like this, and you should, that's the preferred way to straighten the edge of a board. But if you don't have a joiner, there is another method, and that's to use your table saw. And what I like to do is first take the board and put it against the fence, which is nice and straight, and see which way it's curving. Now, this board has a slight curve in this direction. I don't want to run that edge through first, because if I do, I'm basically just going to follow that curve and end up cutting a parallel curve. I like to turn it around and put the side that is curved away from the fence against it. Then I'll run it through, removing just a little bit of material to straighten this edge. After I run all the boards through, I'll move the fence in slightly, flip the boards over, and run the other edge. Surprising how good of a result you'll get. Now I'll just move the fence a sixteenth of an inch closer to the blade and rip the other edge.
All right, let's check out the joint on this side panel. Pretty good, considering I just used a table saw. Now, to secure this joint together, I'm going to use a waterproof glue that's generically known as resorzenol. It comes as a little kit. There's two parts, and it's not cheap. It's $18 for these two cans, a resin and a catalyst. You mix it together by volume. Four parts resin, three parts catalyst. The instructions advise that glue be applied to both edges and then allowed to sit in the open air for about five or ten minutes. Then they can be clamped together. Okay, that's had enough time to set. Now I'll just clamp it together. Now one thing about this waterproof glue is that as long as it's not cured, you can clean it up pretty easily just using a damp sponge. But believe me, once it sets, there's no way you're going to get it off. Now this glue will be fully cured overnight. It's amazing, the strength of that waterproof glue. The first thing I want to do this morning is square up the bottom edge of the side panel blanks. Well, you've seen this device plenty of times, my homemade panel cutter. And it's perfect for squaring up wide boards or panels. I'm going to take off about three quarters of an inch. I'm going to be building several of these benches. So I made a pattern of the side profile out of some poster board. And all I have to do is take the pattern and trace it onto the side blanks. I suppose I could cut these side panels on my bandsaw but it's such a big piece, it's kind of awkward. The jigsaw will do just as good a job. I'm laying out for the cleats that go on the sides. There are three cleats, one at the bottom, one at the front, and one at the top. The top one is slightly sloped so that the water will run off the seat rather than just setting there. It's very easy to lay that out. First, I just square a line across. Then I measure down a quarter of an inch, which is the amount of pitch I want at the front edge. And using my square as a straight edge, I go back to the back corner at nothing and draw a line down for the correct pitch. With all the layout done, the next thing I want to do is ease the corners on all the curved sections. And to do that, I'm going to use my router, which is equipped with a quarter-inch rounding over bit. And I only want to ease just a little bit, so I've raised the bit just slightly above the table. Let's look again at the original. I want to show you this intersection where the backboards join the side. It couldn't be simpler, just a butt joint. The problem with that is when the boards move or shrink, you get a gap through there. So on my prototype, I did something a little different. I put a rabbit joint in the corner. That not only gives strength to it, but it eliminates that problem of seeing through the end. Well, I've made the rabbit in the side panel with my stacked dado head cutter, which is set up in the table saw, and I attach this wooden auxiliary fence so the dado won't hit the metal fence. It's set up for a quarter inch depth and three quarters of an inch in width. Fasten the cleats to the sides, I've pre-drilled and countersunk for these stainless steel screws that I mentioned earlier. 
They're expensive, about eight cents a piece, but we don't want them to rust, we want it to last. I'm ready to mill this stack of boards, which will become the pieces that join the two sides together. And the first thing I want to do is chamfer the edges. And I could use a router with a chamfering bit, but since I have a joiner, I'm going to use it. Now, some joiners only have a fence which tilts to the outside, and that's okay. You'll still get the same chamfer. Mine also tilts to the inside, which is kind of nice because I think it gives you more control in holding the board in position. I'll just make one pass on each corner. Does a great job. Now you might have noticed that next to my radial arm saw, I have a wooden table. And it's built at exactly the same height as the radial arm. And that comes in real handy, especially when I'm cutting long pieces of stock. It also comes in real handy when I want to cut a whole series of boards exactly the same length because I can set up a stop. Now the boards for the back of the bench want to be all exactly the same. So I've positioned the stop at the right distance from the blade. And notice that I've angled the stop block, so I just make contact at a point. The reason I do that is if I was to put it square and sawdust built up in there, you'd see that the board would not go tight to the stop. And I would actually cut it too short. It's a real good system. First you square up the end of the board, then you run it to the stop and trim it up. I'm going to start the assembly by tacking the backboards to one side. And all I'm going to really use is one nail in the center of each board to hold it in place for now. The bottom slats get held in place with some screws. Okay, now I can put the other side on. Well, now I can finish attaching the bottom slats, making sure to leave that gap between the boards. Before I can attach the cleats that hold all the back boards together, I want to cut the arch on the top board. So I'm going to use this little layout stick that I made using some basic geometry. And I'm going to lay it out again so I can show you how you do the geometry. First of all, I want an arc up here on the top board, which I've left loose so I can remove it for trimming. And I want the arc to end an eighth of an inch above the top of the side. The peak of the arc will be right here, along the center of the bench, and at this height. It can be almost any height, but this is closest to the original. Then I connect those two points together with one line. Divide it in half to find this point. Then taking a framing square, I carefully draw a line down the back of the bench until I cross the center line, which is across the width of the bench. Then from that, I can make my stick. I measure from the intersecting point to the top of the arc. Put a nail for a pivot point, and now I can just tap the nail in. And then using a pencil at the top of the stick, draw the arc.
Now this is a place where these stainless steel screws are really going to earn their keep. They'll never rust and they won't leave any stains on the wood. Now these two boards are going to make up the front of the bench and this is the inside. I'm just going to hold it together with a couple of cleats. Now the front panel gets slipped in against the cleats and held in place with a couple nails. Now one more thing, while the assembly is on the workbench, I want to put this cleat on the bottom boards to stiffen them. I'm adding a couple nails in each board from the side. They're about an inch and a quarter up from the edges. And what they are is actually four penny galvanized finish nails that come in clips like this for the nail gun. Because they're countersunk, I don't think they're going to stain. and They won't rust because they are galvanized. The last cleat is this one. It goes across the back of the bench and what it actually does is supports the back edge of the seat. To dress up the front of the seat, I'm adding this strip which has rounded edges and it'll actually give it a thicker look. I'm holding it in place with some glue and nails. Well, that about does it. Now all I gotta do is find a home for it.